Hey, Fitzy Hair, back out again with another one. We're back at Krusty. Remember that tile section, how rough it was? Well, we finally got her straightened away. We had rust in the corner to deal with. We had not one, but two vents that I had to remove. Then I come to find out there was a pile of rust up on the back side of that. Then I had to deal with that big hole over in the corner. But I got it. Stick around. Before we get started, don't forget I got a merchandise line. Check it out, Fidgies Fabrications at teespring.com. The link is in the description below all my videos. And you can pop over and have a look. I got t-shirts, hoodies, sweaters, stickers, mugs. So pop over and have a look. Okay, let's get started. On the last video, I made up these panels here. I made them and I made the intersection in here and up along here and out here. I got all this made. So I got that all completed and that's finished. Uh, I've done that on both sides. So I can now mount the firewall. I have a place for the firewall to mount to. Uh, it's a lot easier to do all this now before I put the chassis in it. And uh, so I figured I'd get all that done. Now we're going to move on to this cowl section. This cowl section here, we got some bad stuff up here. We have holes here. We have holes here. It's the reason why we call her crusty. Across here, we got this uh, cowl section that's really, really rusty. And uh, I, I have no real need for it now. Uh, so I'm just going to cut it because that that's only a water leak. That's uh, going to, because basically the firewall is going to be, if you went straight down, it's going to come through here, right through the middle of this. So I'm just going to eliminate them. I have a small hole up here and that I got to deal with. And of course, I got this one here on the cowl, which is around the, the lip, which is very strange for that to be gone. Like this, perfect here, perfect here, perfect here, but gone there. Why? I don't know. And of course this other vent, and then I got a hole over here to deal with, okay? A uh, few of you pointed out how aggressive I am with uh, the 24s and uh, grinding metal and stuff like that. Um, that's just the way I've always been. I'm a bodyman by trade. Uh, I intend to fill things. I've used aggressive primers as well. Um, to fill up scratches. I don't leave it like this. I do finish it off better than that. I'll run over that with like a, a 100 and whatnot to sand it down. But the main reason why I'm using this here on this car is because it's just way so much rust all along here, okay? You can see all that there. Um, mostly, most times when I'm stripping cars, I'm usually stri stripping them with a 40 stick it or uh, a hook it is what they're called, one or the other, depending on what system you have and they go on an oscillator um i can't find my oscillator I tried looking for it it's upstairs in the attic the oscillator that i used for stripping and uh, so i said no i said we'll just cover this basic here now and just hear why i use it this way uh i would not strip a car with a 24 unless there's a lot of material on it uh, most cases all i do is like i said i do it with a 40 stick it on the car uh, i'm not fussy on chemical strippers they're just messy, and I find they're extremely slow, and they're not healthy. you got to be wearing respirators and everything with them, and I've had some bad uh, issues in the past with chemical strippers. So they burn for skin and whatnot, right? So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to strip all this with the 24 and get this cleaned up and ready to go. I'm not going to get too aggressive with here or here. I want to leave this in there. I'm not going to cut nothing out. I'm just going to give this a little knock over because I want to leave all the shape here, this contour and this contour here. I want to leave all that there so I got something to go by. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up now. Well now, I'm into it now. Um, as I was grinding it off, you were just hitting it and I was breaking through everywhere. Up along the back side here. Just every little rust blister was breaking into a hole. Now I'll renew about that, but these ones up here. Scattered little one here and there. 
I can feel the back side of them there. There was an, an actual section of the firewall there that came up and went right tight to this lip. And I figured I'd just rust it. And, uh, and of course we got this section over here that we already knew. I found a little spot down here. What I'm going to do is, and I, of course I cleaned that off, I gotta straighten it a bit better than that. But I'm just gonna start from one side and work my way across and cross that bridge as I come. Um, I'm repairing this regardless. So if I gotta get into it to sit, you can see look there, all that in there. Yeah. So I'll be putting a section in here for sure on this section here and I uh, gotta watch it. What I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do here now is the way I rebuilt a few projects here now. I'm just gonna cut this section. I'm gonna leave this lip alone. This lip seems to be in good shape. I'm gonna cut this section here out, leave that alone, put it in here, weld it in along here, dress that, grind it up there and get that side section done, finished, and then I'll work on doing the top section. Uh, do a bit at a time, just do a little section at a time. I'm not gonna get carried away with it because um, this can be overwhelming. I'm not gonna think about what's over there right now. I'm just gonna concentrate on this area here Fixing all this up, getting this tidied up, and uh, get this welded up. So the first thing I'm going to do here now is I'm going to make this piece up here, and uh, basically clean that off and get a piece welded in there. Okay, this is what I got done so far. I just cleaned up this side section here, and I cleaned up these couple of holes. I'm not going no farther than that. Not getting into this. There's a lot of work that got to be done to this, and I'm not going getting in too deep into it. If I cut all the rust out of it, there'd be nothing left of the cowl. Uh, someone's going to speak up and say, Tony, why don't you just get a new cowl for section for it? Uh, sourcing a cowl for this is one thing because of the type of car it is and then waiting for it to get here. And I got no time to be waiting on it. And on top of that, one of the things I'm trying to do with this car is I'm trying to restore the car with all the factory panels on it, just patching up all the original panels on the car. I could buy fenders, I can buy a hood, I can buy doors, I can buy a trunk lid, I can buy all that stuff. Uh, source it uh, overseas and have it shipped in and be all mint finest kind but it won't be the original panels blonde of the car and when someone comes up and sees all the rust that this car had and realizes how good it looks when it's finished they're going to say my god you must replace all the panels which I never but anyway back to this I got to what I'm doing here is I'm just going to do one section at a time I was going to build this whole corner on top of this corner and then cut it out and replace it but what I'm noticing now uh, is that this panel just floats there and it's pretty, it's not what you call very solid. And when I start cutting all the metal out of it, it's going to be nothing left to it. So I'm going to work from this side of the cowl and work my way across the cowl, repairing panels as I go, replacing it, make, giving strength to it, and keeping an eye on it, make sure it's straight. So I'm going to weld this piece in first, which I got made up here. Okay, I'm going to weld that in there, grind it off. And use this panel here that I can actually grind a flush. Then I'll make a panel to go in here. And I'll weld that in and I'll grind just that. I can get at the inside of this panel here, as you can see. So I can weld the inside corner on this panel right here on the car. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to fit this in place here. I'm going to weld that lower corner edge down here. Weld all that on there, grind and dress it. And then I'm going to trim all this up. So then I can move on to the next piece. I'm going to do it one piece at a time.
So there it is, the side is all done. I grind and dressed it. I like finishing everything off before it goes any further. You see me welding that in there, and then I just chopped it off. Then I took the grinder and grinded a flush. This is why I like leaving this stuff here, because now I got my height going down through here. And I also grinded it back a little small bit here on the top side so that I can weld it, because I don't intend to come right down to here at my next piece. I only intend to come to about here somewhere and then cut this over this way to put a section in there. But I went and done that, and then I turned around and welded a few holes here. You see me making the little plug weld, using the drill and the grinder to make the little plugs for this with a bit of coat hanger. I've done that a lot, done that in previous videos. But that's an easy fix for that. So I got all this done. I'm happy with it. I finished it. Now I'm going to move on and make this piece here. I'm going to cut a piece out now and fit it to that so it flows nice before I even cut that out. So I went ahead and I cut a piece out and shaped it all up and got it rigged up so it all fits in here. And then what I went and did then is I went ahead and I cut so much of it out, but it still overlaps up here now. And the reason why I cut this out is because I had to weld that top on this piece down here. I couldn't weld that from down there. And when I put that piece in here with that rolled edge on, I had to weld the top on here. So I got it through here. So I got all that welded on now. And uh, that's basically what you're up against there. That was the piece that was there. I cut it out, trimmed it back and whatever. And I, was, uh, I cut a bit more off it since then. But uh, I was here debating on whether to do the cotton bud on this or uh, just trim it, cut it to fit. So it's a small piece, I might just do cut it to fit. That way I can uh, trim it up and whatnot if I need to be, because it's so small. And I got to take my time with my heat and everything. So I got to deal with this here, bumping this. It's kind of hard to get the, uh, the cotton wheel past that without damaging it. So I might I turn around and, and scribe it, as you can see, up along here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut that right along the scribe line. And that deer now should pretty well fit in there with uh, very little uh, problems. So I'm going to trim that up now to get that fit in there. I got it fit in there. I got it trimmed up. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my time and I'll concentrate on this section out here on the front side. Because it's not so much to worry about there because that's just an edge and that's an edge. But up around here I want to try to keep this as flat as I possibly can. So I'm going to put a few tacks on this now and work this edge here and I could do nothing with that. I'm going to weld across here, get all that straightened away first. So that if I've got to put a spoon in there to tap it, I will. I won't weld on this around here yet. I'll just finish off this lip here. So here's all I got done. I got tacked across there every so often. I'm going to keep the cool air on this because I'm trying to keep the temperature down on it. Take my time because I know this is going to pull away from me if I don't uh, go to hell with it. But I'm not going to weld none of this up here yet. Across the back here, I'm just going to weld this across here and finish that right off. So then all I got to do is weld this corner and weld this corner. Here it is all grinded up. It feels very pretty good. A little bit of a low spot here on the outer edge. I can work that. But in here, around that here, oh, that's pretty good in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come across top here. As you can see, i got to push down this corner. I'm going to start welding this across here. And then I'll shape this a little bit more because it's still a bit high right there. And I'll tap that down because this is the height it's got to be. And then that there, there's got to be the height of that. And then I'll weld that up there. I'll go in the inside and I'll weld it on the inside there and I'll weld it on the inside there. Then I can come out here and I can dress up this edge. So I went ahead and I welded it across the top here. And then I welded it down the side here. And then I went on the inside and I welded it in along here. And then I welded it in along here on the inside. Then I went and welded where I had it welded here on the inside to give it more strength. As you can see there because it's all welded up from the bottom side. So now that's all in place. It feels half decent there now. I'm just going to grind all that up. All I'm going to do is like I've done before is I grind this flat here, grind, grind this flat here. And then I'll roll the edge over. I'll get it on a point first so I've got a nice line to go by and then I'll roll it over. And there it is. Nice, nice roll edge there, nice roll edge there. Nice transition through it all. It's all solid metal again now. Factory style spot welds down through here. The original piece is still there. And I went ahead and cleaned up. All them holes there were cleaned up. So that piece there is done. I'm pretty pleased how it came out. But you can see the reasoning why I done it like that. Like if you had to cut a big chunk out of this here, you'd be trying. You didn't know where the height was to. You didn't know. Like you don't know this height here. You don't know this distance here. But by doing it one piece at a time, you're you're maintaining uh, an edge, right? So, you know, that, that was one of the key reasons why I done this like this. Instead of cutting it all out, making all the pieces up. And making it on the bench and then come over trying to fit it in. Because trying to get this here transition here nice. And this one here nice. It's very hard. Usually what ends up happening is this here will end up tipping out. Or it will be rolled out. 
this edge here will be too straight um, you know all that type of stuff but I used each individual rusted panel to go by so that's done now let's walk over here Whoa. see what we're up against the um, this is my next panel here now I got a hole here so I know this is weak up along this back side here from looking at the other panel so I was debating on whether to take this whole section out of it but I think I'm just going to concentrate on it to about here somewhere and uh, get this much of it done here not worry about everything over there yet I'll probably put this piece in it first get this done and then I'll start making a panel I think I may take the panel right from this back edge here and come right on down here and come across here like this and then come up and then make just one full panel to cover in that section there then all I got to worry about is having this section here looking good and then this section over here looking good because this edge here will be on an edge and this will be on an edge up here so uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and start making a panel for that here's what I come up with I just cut a piece out that was too big too long and I trimmed it all down I cut it so it went around the edge here and then I trimmed it back and trimmed it back till it went along the edge there and then I worked on getting a roll in it then you gotta watch with this it's this got a roll in it this way but also got a roll in it this way right so when you look down this panel it's not what you call it straight it's got a crown in it right it's a very slight crown um, some of you might be saying well why don't you just replace the whole top of the cowl the problem becomes is that I'm trying to save as much of the factory cowl as I can um, and I'm trying to do this pretty basic I'm not getting into two I can do it the problem you're going to run into here with doing it in one piece is that okay the cowl has got a crown on it this way like if you look at that that way there you see the way that is there so there's a crown right here in the middle so if I was to decide to make this whole piece in one section I would have to deal with this roll here plus I got to deal with this here and make sure I got it in the center and whatnot and it's the more it's it can be done not a problem but to me it's just a lot more work I'm just looking to delete these replace the rust and uh, do that I'm just trying to work my way apart my way across the panel because I don't want to uh, distort this too much as I'm going so what I'm going to do now is I'll clean this panel up and all I'm going to do with this one is cotton butt I'm going to uh, fit this where I want it tack weld it on all the way around and then start cutting it off now I got it all cleaned up and ready to go not doing nothing with that just leaving that worse too I'm going to lay this in place here now and I'm going to fit it where I want to and start tacking it around every four inches or so to get this panel held in place that's the first thing I'm going to do so that's all I got done now. I got tack welded in place and I'm happy with the feet around her now. I went and filed up the edge here a bit with the grinder so it was on the right angle. Same with the front here. So now what I'm going to do now is take a corner, probably start here, cut my way around this corner here, get this corner just to fall in place. Uh, some people have had to put in the sand with screws or cleat goes and figure a halt in place. Well, then it's always the best way. I've always found the best way to do it. Uh, it's there. This is where it's too. All this panel I got to do now is drop down the thickness of the metal. And that's it. So it's not going to move on you. Uh, you got no motor holes to drill up because you're going to have to re-weld in these actual spots again. Because I'll cut through here. I'll cut through that weld, and I'll cut through that weld, and I'll cut through that weld. And but I'll I'll re-weld them again as I'm going and work my way around. So as I cut here and cut here. I'll re-weld this one and weld it here and I'll weld it here and then I'll go out and I'll cut and I'll keep going and I'll weld that and I'll weld that so
dig it out. Come out. There it is. Look at the rust. So there you have it. All flush mounted in along there. Caught up along that edge there. Flush mounted along there. Straightforward and simple. All I went and did is I, after I cut the welds, I went back and re-welded them again. Now there's the piece I cut out. I had a bit of trouble getting it out because she was sticking on some of the welds. And uh, there's a little lip there for it to come down out of. Same with back in here. There was a little lip that had to be removed. But that's the piece cut out. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to take my time and start welding these about every inch apart. Let it cool down, put some air on it, and then start uh, welding it right along. No beads, just one hole, just the same as this. The whole thing is going to be welded together with little welds like that next to each other. And then keep the air cool on it because what, right in here and right in here is crucial that, I, uh, that I'm afraid is going to fall. Now, the nice thing about this is I can get at the back side of it with ease, right? So I'm going to take my time and weld all that up. Well, it's welded in all the way along there. Took my time in through there and uh, along these edges here. Then I went ahead and I welded them on the back side along these edges and then uh, done these on the inside as well on the bottom side and get at it all. And then I've done the same thing in here, welded that on the inside. So now all I got left to do is go back and grind it all up. And I'm going to do the same thing grind this edge here, grind this edge here, get a lip there, and then roll it up, same as back in here. Then grind these flat. It feels pretty good. I'm pleased with it. I had to dolly it a bit. The problem with it is the panel is uh, taking heat from in here and I'm constantly adding heat to it. But when I got on the inside, I got a little bit carried away with myself and start welding the back side a little bit more aggressively. And uh, figured it was welded in and then she kind of like she started to move on me. So I had to stop that. I got it back though. So I'm going to grind it up there now. So here it is. I just grind it off for the first time. Over here, I got a couple of spots I got to redo down through here and here. And you can see this is this edge I was telling you about. Okay, all I'm doing is I grind a flat this way and flat this way here till I got a crisp edge. And there's some imperfections and everything there. I'm going to weld them up first. You can see them there. There you go, that's better. And you can see the imperfections. I'm going to weld them up now. You can round that off because there's a round edge on that there. But the problem with this is then you got to deal with all that there. Ollie's trying to get all that straightened away first. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to weld all that up first before I even make an attempt to roll over the edge because I know some of it's pretty low. Right there is really bad, see? So I'm going to do that, do that spot there, and i got a couple of spots down here to do. And then uh, I'll finish that off. And there's the first one done. Let's weld it in down through here and over here. Um, it came out pretty nice. I'm pretty pleased with it. We come over here and you can look, and you can see... How straight it is. There's a little tiny bit of light there. And a little tiny bit of light there. Not much worth talking about. Right in that area there. Right. You could work that if you wanted to. But this metal is like 22, 24 gauge metal. And the more I works this, the worse that's going to be. So I figured uh, best to. I like. I don't do these panels like the cotton butt thing. I don't do this to make everything perfect. Um, a lot of you may think uh, otherwise, but being a bodyman for 30 years, I always had a problem with doing metal repairs and then filling it, okay? I always had a problem with edges, corners, roll edges, high spots, low spots. And I just do this to make the body work a lot better and easier to do. Now I'm going to move on to this one. All I'm going to do here is straightforward and simple. I'm going to cut in here, cut up, cut across, cut down, and it, like there's no bottom lip on this, it's just a 90 degree. So I'm going to cut out a little piece, trim that out there, and weld a piece in there. When you dig into stuff, you never know what you're going to get into. It was even gone on the inside piece, though. It's gone right on through there. Not only there, but down through here as well. I got a piece made up here now to go in there. Just going to fit that up from underneath here, like so, and weld that in there. And then I'm going to make up an outside section and weld that in. Won't bore you with all that, it's basically straightforward stuff. I'm just going to weld it down here, along here, weld that, dress all that, grind it up. Now don't that look lovely? Precision, perfect welds. Woohoo! Anyway, 
<coughs> enough about that. Uh, one thing I want to point out here, I've talked about it before, you may be wondering why I leave this stuff long. Uh, when you're welding, like if this, if this was cut straight across here and you had to weld the top edge here, it's very hard to weld two ends. It ends up burning the ends off both ends of it and it falls down. It's very hard to weld the end of it. It's one of the reasons why I leave it long, so I can burn from here up to this. So now when I get a chance now, I guess it's grind off and I cut it off, I got a nice clean weld there. On both sides, same thing, you can see how high it is up here. Right? If that was down, if that piece was cut off here, it'd be hard to weld that to get a good clean edge. I'm gonna go ahead now and grind all that up. And there it is, all welded in. All brand new. Another hobble done. Now, this is one here that's gonna be a bit of fun. Okay? I got holes up here and I got holes here. Alright, now I've just sizing it all up and I think I'm gonna try my hand at just trying to weld them up. Okay? I've talked about it before, pulsating, welding up small holes. What I'm gonna do is I got a piece of brass here, okay? It's just a chunk of brass. They're great for this, nice beginning. Uh, some people use copper, uh, copper pipe. Uh, the problem with this is too thin. You need something that's got a bit of thickness to it because uh, MIG welding will actually melt copper to pipe. Uh, you can flatten it out, it'll work for a while. Uh, to get you by because there's always copper pipe around but a nice big th thick piece of brass or thick piece of copper I'm gonna lay that right underneath the hole there like so and I'm gonna try to weld that up there now wish me luck here goes nothing Now I'm going to stop it there. You can see I got it all over here. That come out pretty good that way. You see, you see me pulsating the trigger, the slight uh, click in the trigger. And all I was doing over there, as you can see it right here, is I was welding around it, trying to get some uh, metal around the, the low area. And by doing so, what I'm doing is I'm making the lower, the outer edge of it thicker by adding wire to it. And every time I struck it, it'll turn red hot. I would let it cool a bit if it wasn't contacting on the next one. So like I stopped that time because it was over here and, and no matter how many times I hit it, it just burned away because it was still too hot. So I had to let it cool down. So I'll go back now and I'll just start slightly triggering it across here and let the redness go out of the weld and go around. Once it gets all the outer edge of it strong, then I'll start working my way to the middle and you'll, you'll hear me turn the welder to trigger on more and I'll, I'll put more heat into it.
Ooh, don't that look pretty? But you saw me there welding and heating it, heating it, working my way around, then I put the heat into it. You're going to end up getting a, a knobs of weld like this here. The reason why I done that here and never cut nothing out is because uh, this here has got a raised edge all the way around it, and it's going to be hard to make it all up, and they're only small holes. And I wanted to see if I could save it before I had to go through and cut all this out, and I managed to save it. So, uh, one thing you got to watch when you're doing this here is keep an eye on which way your weld, your welding is falling, because you want your weld to fall into the panel uh, when you're working around it. You don't want it to build up. So, like any excess weld that you have, you like to have it down low below the panel so that when you start welding everything up you know you got enough material there to uh, grind it because if you just start putting wells on top of wells on top of wells on top of wells you're just going to end up with a big tower and it's going to be hollow in the middle when you grinds it all off you're going to be back with a hole again so you got to keep an eye on it as you're welding around the hole that uh, the hot weld falls into the hole each way around so then you're basically filling up the edge of the hole all the way around and you're coming back and you got a nice thick edge all the way around your your thin metal around your hole and then you're just going to go back and weld it all up I'm going to go ahead now and grind that all up and see what it looks like. Well, let me tell you, I got the battle scars to prove it and everything. Welded that up. What a time I had with that. Uh, I'd say I've got an hour gone into this now. I'm trying to save this because I want to put wipers on it. And I start welding it up, and I got it all welded up, and then I grind it off, and then I grind through, and then I welded it up, and then I grinded it off, and then I welded it, grind it through. <laughs> I noticed I got some patience. But, um,. Anybody, you see these guys restoring old 30s and 40s cars and you see them doing all the fancy welding, welding up holes and like that and then you want to go out in your late model vehicle and do the same type of welding, trust me, it's not the same. This is 24 gauge metal and I'm trying to do stuff with this that I shouldn't even be doing with it and it's very, very hard. I end up having to build up this whole section all the way around here at weld, all that there and then just start shaping it as it's going. Do a bit at a time, come back, and then cut through it, grind through it. It just seems like when I weld at this spot and I weld at this spot, here in the middle, got weak. And then when I grind this off, I made it weak over here, and I just kept going right around. The only spot I haven't got no welding on is right here on the bottom. There's no, nothing there, but from there, right on around that, that's all welding. Well, I'm happy with it. That's good enough for it. It's got the little relief on it. It's got the flat top on it. It's good enough. You notice the little relief on the side is gone. That spot there, I, don't, I can put that back in if I need to, but I don't think I'm going to bother. And uh, I figured I can just take a file and put that in it, but I'm not going to that right now. I've had enough of that. Anyway, I'm going to move on and do this section here. Now this is much the same as what I did here. Okay, so all I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this one out, get the piece made up and get it welded in so we can concentrate on doing this one here. Because this is just more of what we just did. One vent delete. That's it, I got that done. I had the same process as what I've done over here. I never done nothing different. And I cut it all out and got clear of it and it's all gone. So add that to the pile. So we went ahead and I got that done. This side here came out better than this side because I noticed some things were going on. One thing that were on this, I was starting to get ahead of myself on the heat. Okay. Uh, we all have a tendency to do it. We all figured, well, I put two beads there instead of one. I put three beads there instead of one, right? And it catches up with you. I had to work this side a bit more to get it get it right because I had a little bit too much heat in it. And over this side here, I just took my time, went around one at a time, one at a time. So, you know, I can make the same mistakes you guys can make. Uh, you know, every now and again, I'll be, I want to get stuff done and I'll try to push it a bit further and... You can't, you can't force the heat on this stuff, especially on this 24 gauge metal, it's nuts, right? Like this is 24, this is uh, 18, and this is 18. And the 18 is what's giving this all the strength back, okay, all this stuff here. This, this 24 is nuts. 
the Trotter Weld. It's much the same as on that Datsun truck. Uh, it's all recycled metal, and it was a poor quality recycled metal. So, let's get started on this one now. I got one, two, three, four patches, possibly five, because I got one down here. See? That one there. And uh, so I'm going to do the same process again. I'm going to start out here. I'm going to cut a little piece out of that, make a piece for it, weld it in, cut a piece out of that, weld it in. Then I'm going to work on this section here. A lot of times we're at this stuff and we want to just take it and just chop everything out of the way. But I got this line here to go by, this line here to go by. And they're, now I want to leave them there and also this corner here. I want to leave them there so I got something to go by on each piece and then do it one at a time. First thing I did is I cut the section out of here, uh, back to good metal. This is a little piece that I had that I cut out. I went over it in and I made a little template. You use that as a template. Ooh, me using templates. Uh, and I used that and I cut a piece out of that, welded a coat hanger onto it so I could hold that in place. Just make sure when you cut it out that you don't weld it on the wrong side first. <laughs> I had to cut the coat hanger out and weld on the right side. So I got the piece made up there now to fit in there. Because that's not a perfect triangle. If you flipped it over this way, it was like up this way. And uh, anyway, so I got that there now. I'm going to weld that in place. Now I went ahead and I welded that one in, as you can see. And I ran into a hole right here that's very weak. Now don't be concerned about that. I stopped it right there because I'm going to take the piece now up through here and join on to this piece here and remove all this section here because it's bad. I just wanted to finish off this bottom side and work my way up. This is the way I do a lot of these patches. You would sit down and try to cut all this out and try to shape it all up. That's a flat section, that's a flat section. I'm not concerned about trying to bend everything up. It's a lot easier to make up a flat piece and weld it in and then make another flat piece and weld it in and dress it all up. I've learned that over the years. Because you can bend up a piece of metal here, bend up a piece of metal, and this is tweaked one way and that's tweaked the other way. This crease has gone the wrong way. Just weld in a flat piece, weld in a flat piece. So now I got that all welded in. I'm going to uh, grind it all off, finish that one off, and then move on to that one. And that's all welded in. And dressed. So now, let's go up here now, trim this off, and clean off this section, and get that welded up. Now this one's a bit tricky. I got it all trimmed out, a couple of shapes on the go here. You can sit down and try to make a piece to fit that perfectly. Nope, I'm not going at that. I'm going to weld that place on the bottom. As you can see that there. And I weld that there, and I'm going to concentrate on going up the side and getting this welded up through here and across the bottom here. All this here, I'm going to trim this all after, off of this piece. I'm going to start with a large piece and get it welded in place and then work my way around the panel and trim it as I need to. And then tack it in place and weld it up. And you see me coming down this side here, then I come down this side here because it was fitting good. And then I trimmed off the bottom, welded it in, 
And then I come up here and just start cutting pieces out of the way. I made a mistake. I cut off too much on this side. So I had to use a filler strip to put in it. I used a piece of coat hanger to fill it in. Made sure the coat hanger was below it. And then I run into some thin spots here and there. And you see me touching it. A lot, you'll come across this on a lot of these import cars. You really don't think you're going to find thin metal or, or you know, bad metal until he hits it. And what are you supposed to do? Like, you know, it was really thin up in this corner. You just take your time and fill it in. And then you see me driving the heat into it. I just wanted to make sure that I, that there was nothing else thin around it. And I wanted to put some extra heat into it to uh, give it a bit more strength. So I'm going to go ahead now and grind all it up. There it is, all cleaned up. Brand new. Never overthought it. It looked to be rough. Put a piece in here, and I put a piece in it there, and I just grind it all up. Blew through holes up here, just put lots of welding in it. This I never welded this up after. This is the all the welding that was on it. So I got this in the first smack. So I got that done. All I used to do all that there grinding was all this here. That was it. I used little small wheels, the left over, little small stone left over, the small one of them is left over, and a couple of die grinding. That's just a round one and uh, a squared off one. That's it. That's everything I use to clean all that up. So now let's move on to this. Let's start cleaning this out. I'm going to go right back to here on this one here. I'm going to make a an entire piece to go along there. Not going to touch none of this yet. I'm going to make a piece to go in there. That'll just come straight down and I'll weld that on there. So there it is. All I've done is just trimmed it out. I cut everything out. I left the height of it there. So you can roll off the edge, cut it off. I bring it still there, even that little piece is still there. Here's the section I cut out of it. I took my time trimming it out. Didn't want to disturb too much. I cut it out. Then I went over and I found a piece of scrap piece of steel on the bench. You can see it's got a quirrell shape to it. And I come over here then and I just uh, fit it in place and trimmed it and trimmed it and fit it and trimmed it and fit it. So I got that in place now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim nothing else off of that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and weld that right across the bottom there. There you go, finished. I think a little bit of filler over the top of that. That'll be brand new. <laughs> so what I'm going to do next now is I'm going to trim off this end and get that welded up across there. And I'm going to start trimming along there and get that there so it's good. And I'll just take the grinder then and I'll grind that flat like I did the other side. So then I got something to, to lay the panel against to weld it up. And then that piece will be ready to go. I can move on to the next one. All I did is I trimmed it up along there, and then I'll take the grinder then, and I'll grind the top off of that so it's the same height as that. And then I cut it down to the corner here, I didn't mind cutting up into that because I can weld that up again. So I can tuck in this corner to roll around the edge, and I'll weld all this up here down here now first before it goes and grinds all that off. There it is, all grinded up, and all flushed off here. I went ahead and I rounded out this corner, welded that up, and then I went ahead and I started to weld it along here. And I stopped right here because I'm going to cut this now from here right across to this side here somewhere and remove that section. But that's the one of the advantages of leaving the old piece there. I used it to guide down through there to get this all level. So now this here is the same height as this panel here. So then I went ahead and I cut a panel out and dollied it up and shaped it and got it fit in there. And what I'm going to do here now, up along here, I'm going to bolt weld it, going to bolt weld down here. I'm going to come down here now. And just leave a little bit of it left on the panel and I'll do the cotton butt across straight across this way here but I'll butt it here and I'll butt it here I just want to give it something because if I go tries to butt it's too big of a piece for me to try to butt all three of them um, so I want something for that to rest on so I got uh, somewhere that I can cut it from so I'm going to trim that up there now and uh, start installing that piece okay I went ahead cut all that out of it I got in here then I welded the top of that piece that I wanted to weld up I got that all welded up so now it's all ready for me to start welding this in. I'm going to start up in this corner here and start working my way out. I want to get this edge here nice and this edge here nice. And then when I get over to this, then I'll worry about cutting the button that after the fact. But I want to get this a nice edge down here and a nice edge across here. So I'll start welding that piece in. So I started up here and I worked across the top. And I got that to weld over as far as there because this is up over here because there's a piece still underneath it. And then I come over here and I work my way down here and put this panel the same height as this one here. And then I welded that one on. And I put a lot of heat in this here and weld that in the corner there. And I weld that right across there. Well, first thing I do now is I got to cut that across here and get that piece out from underneath it and get this down the same height as that. So I'm just going to do the cotton butt right across there. So I went ahead and did the cotton butt. I got that all chopped off there. There's the piece I cut out of it. 
As you can see, that's all gone flush there now. All up along there. It's all nice and flush. I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to take my time, and just going to weld one spot here, and go right around this whole thing, weld it all up. I'll cool it on every pass. I'll go around it once, I'll cool it, I'll go around it again, I'll cool it, and I'll just take my time with it. I won't get ahead of myself, and I'll get that all welded up. And there it is, all welded up. I turned around, took my time, went around it, cooled it each time, went around. Just got to be patient with it, and I got it all welded up. Then I went on the bottom side then, and you can see the heat here. I went welded the inside here, and I welded the inside right along inside here, because I did have a joint up through here. So I got lots of meat inside there. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to grind all this up and uh, dress it up. As you can see, I got it all grind down. Uh, there's a few spots up along here, down through here. That's still got to be welded up again, second time. I left my edge nice and sharp. I grinded it flat this way and I grinded it flat this way so I can find out where all my bad spots are too. So I can actually uh, weld them up and get a nice crisp edge along here. I'll round that out after I get all that done. And same with up across here. There's a few spots along here and I'll weld them up first. And get a nice crisp edge along here before I rounds it off. This side here is a little bit more abrupt than this side. And you can see this is all I did. I went back and I welded up the few spots that I didn't like. And I'll grind that all off and I'll roll up my edges then. And there it is, all finished up. Big difference. Like I said, just took my time, replaced the section first, then replaced the section after. I'm really pleased with that, the way that came out. It's got the nice roll up the edge, got a slight roll out the back, kind of rolls up this way here. So now I got that done, and here we are at our last piece. It's the last hole we got to deal with here on this job. So what I'm going to do is, I've, in behind this I can feel it's pretty rusty, I'm going to cut this off up along here, along here, and take this whole end piece out, and make up a whole new piece to put in there. So I'm going to cut that out there now and make up piece for it. Now I went ahead, I cleaned it all out, I cut it back to here and went over and overlapped over here and I removed the entire end off it. So basically it got to be spot welded on here and then it's welded across top here and down along here. Uh, making a little tiny piece like that can be a nightmare. You just see me bending up this piece in the vise. All I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that handle on it because I'll cut it off after. I'm going to start fitting this in here, trimming it, bending it, fitting it so that this here fits in along here and along here. And I'll cut it up along here. I'm not going to worry about this length. I'll just trim that off after the fact because I want something that I can hold on to while I'm putting it in place there. So I'm going to go ahead now and start trimming that up. So here's all I got made up. I cut it and I trimmed it. I'm not concerned about that little handle. I'll cut that off after the fact. And that will fit right in there like so. And I'm going to weld that along the top there. Up the side, them two spot welds. And then when that's all grinded up, I can cut that off. As simple as that. I don't overthink these type of uh, pieces, especially when they're small. It's better to make it out of a large piece like this and you got something to hold on to and it's not in the way because trying to hold a small piece like that in place is very hard. At least now I got something there that I can move it around and twist it if I need to twist it. And so I'm going to go ahead now and weld that in. Now don't that look wonderful? Big old chunk of metal up there. It'll hold the windshield in. What do you think? All I got to do now is I'm going to grind all it up, dress it all up, and uh, then cut it off. I'm going to grind it all up first before it cuts this off, uh, just in case. But uh, I want to have it all flush mounted and everything like that. If I cut this off, then I got to try to work the welds on the end of the metal, on the edge, and I don't want to wear that out, so I'm going to finish these off first before I chops it off. Here it is all grinded up. Got inside the, down, the lower corner here with the little cut off wheel. 
clean that up and I reweld at the spot where I ground through over here. Never be concerned about like if you got to cut a piece out and you end up cutting the metal because you've probably seen I had a cut here and I was cutting this in a couple of spots. It's only steel. You can weld it up. If you want to do a nicer job to get the pieces out of there, you're going to have to sometimes cut into your gold panels. Okay. Uh, I got it all done there now. I'm happy with that. All I got left to do now is just trim that off and this job is done. And there you have it. All trimmed up, cleaned up. And all ready to go, everything's welded up. We'll put a little round edge back on it again. Use the little spot welds on it. And it's like it's never been tampered with. Looks the part. And that's it for this. You look at all that there now. Going across there. Down this side here. There was a lot of work on this. Uh, it was a big undertaking. Uh, some will say it was a waste of time. Uh, you should have replaced the panel. The problem I got is I can't get this panel. And the replacement panel still would have needed these cut out of it because I didn't need them. If you could get the panel. Uh, making a whole panel? Yeah. It would have been a lot more hours uh, into it. And the problem with it is, is that you would be very hard to have nothing to go by because uh, you're trying to duplicate it over the top of this. And then I'm trying to save two of these. If I was eliminating them, probably could have made an entire panel. But you got to realize this panel has got this shape going across here and it tips up. And then it goes down on this side and it's down on this side. And then it also rolls up along the back by the windshield. And then a shape like this on that curved edge, right? So it's a fair bit of work going on to try to make one piece out of it. But I'm very pleased with it. Uh, some of you might be saying about the, the finish. How, a number of you talked about that, about how I grind everything off. I guess I do it this way. This is how I done it as a bodyman. This is what I like my filler to stick to, okay? I have no problems with filler. This car will be filled. This whole panel here will be filled, okay? Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, I don't do this stuff for finished product. If I wanted to finish these panels off to the point that I didn't need filler on, there's a lot more hours got to go into them, okay? And then you're going to be running nightmares because it's only 22 gauge metal, or 24, or whatever it is on this end over here. A uh, lot of guys that are finishing metal off is usually 18 gauge on older 50s, 40s, 30s cars. It's very hard to do it on a modern car because the metal is so thin. So that's the reasoning behind it. And I, I got nothing to prove. There's waves in this, there's low spots, high spots, but there's nothing we're talking about that a skin wouldn't fix. I'm quite content with that. Uh, there was 11 pieces put in that cowl section. All right, it was a lot of work, but you see how I went about went about it. Uh, most people would have started chopping everything out of it. If you chopped everything out of this here to start off with, you would have had nothing left of this cow, and then it would have been all sagging, and you wouldn't have uh, like no, that's no good. That's not going to work. I can't fit it now. I got nothing to go by, and that's the reason why I build it like I do. I do a piece at a time and use the existing panels to to build off of. That way, I can duplicate it a lot easier. And especially where I can get at the inside of this panel. I went ahead and I cut that piece off the front of it. It just didn't look nice there anymore. This is strong enough. I'm going to have issues with this because I'm going to have to make sure this is in the right position up and down when I put the hood in place. So when I build the firewall, I got to make sure that I got this is not too low and whatnot on it, right? So, but that's not a big issue. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But that's it. That was the big one. Getting them vents gone, they're all gone now, and we've got the rust in the corners all fixed. And it's uh, all nice and ready now for me to do the next step, which is to put the chassis in the front of this. That'll be on the next video. Anyway, I hope the tips are good, and until next time.